Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Destiny 2 weekly reset video. My name is Story and today is February the 4th, which means we're running up until the 11th because that's how things go around here. And uh, there's some exciting things happening in the world of Destiny 2 this week as time-gated content is being ungated and uh, everyone's going to rejoice and cry tears of enjoyment. Um, I had a little screen grab pop up um, before logging in today or after logging in rather that said this. Looking to the future, Empyrean Restoration, your services are needed once more in the Sundial. The Sundial core must be moved to the Tower Obelisk, retrieve the core and help set Osiris's if I could English, help set Osiris's mysterious plans in motion. Doesn't that sound exciting? Well, there you go. So I guess there's some stuff to do. I don't want to spoil it. So go do that stuff and donate your precious earned fractaline, fractaline, um, clementine, clementine. Anyway, what have we got to do in Destiny 2 this week? Well, I'm going to start things off a little differently because why not? Your flashpoint this week is on Nessus. How's about that then? I can hear the joy right now. So that's, if you go on over to Nessus, that's where your flashpoint is. The Dreaming City Curse is in week two. Next week, it'll be at the highest of its cursenessness. So I hope you're looking forward to that. The Ascendant Challenge is at the Spine of Keris. So that's somewhere over here, I do believe. So if you want to go and do your Ascendant Challenge, you need to hop on over to Petrovenge, which is quite conveniently right by the spawn point and pick up the bounty before gallivanting over to the spine and sipping on your precious uh, tincture of Queen's Foil. Okay, so that is that. Um, Leviathan Raid Order, should we do that right now? We're going to do it. The Leviathan Raid Order this week is, um, it is the Gauntlet, Dogs, Baths, and of course Callus. Uh, we'll head on over to the vendors and have a look what armor he's got at the moment, because I know that makes you all excited and, and scream with... Uh, Glee. Um, then we can have a look at the Vanguard playlist because this is what we do. Um, if you want to replay some daily heroic story missions for XP, that that is the thing. Um, that's what you would do. If you want to do some Vanguard strikes, then completing three strikes using the same subclass element as the currently active element or burn will get you some powerful gear at tier one. This is why we do stuff. There's various vendors and um, challenges and bounties to pick up throughout the Destiny universe. And, and uh, we would do these for powerful gear. So there you go. That's your Vanguard Strike playlist. Three of those strikes with the same subclass element as the currently active Elemental Burn will get you some powerful gear at Tier 1. What is the weekly Elemental Burn, you say? Well, it's Solar Singe. And that will stay with us until the next week's re weekly reset. Then we've got Grounded and Brawler. Those are the mods for today. How about the Nightfall, the Ordeal? This week it happens to be a Tree of Probabilities. So uh, if that tickles your fancy, your fancy will nay be tickled. And uh, of course, the weekly is Complete Nightfall Ordeal Activities. Higher difficulties grant the most efficient progress. So run it through a few times and you'll get your powerful Precious gear at tier one. If you want some pinnacle gear, which happens to be the most coveted of gear, meaning it's going to drop a few levels above your light level and could possibly be useful, maybe, possibly not at all, but that means you will have to complete the nightfall with a team score above 100,000 points. That's how that goes. Then we've got a other nightfall playlist, the regular flavor nightfalls. We've got Lake of Shadows, Pyramidian, and the Festering Core. Two of these strikes have some specific loot that if you happen to run at the strike over and over and over and over and over until your fingers and thumbs are chapped and sore, then possibly you might get this strike-specific loot. The Lake of Shadows has the malicious birthright kinetic grenade launcher for you to be <laughs> cherished in the crucible with your one banging noob tube of love. Then there's the Pyramidian, that will get you the Silicon and Aroba sniper rifle if you happen to be lucky enough. The Festering Core will get you nothing but a festering nothing, as far as we know, unless it hasn't been added to the game yet. So there you go, that's your strike specific loot business for the Vanguard playlist. We're going to move on to Gambit, because I know you love it. Uh, we have a Reckoning activity here. Um, one to four players, it says, although I highly recommend going in with four, not one, because that's not nice. That's got matchmaking as well. There's three flavors of this tier one, tier two, and tier three. You'll have to complete these uh, respectively, and uh, each one will drop different um, uh, experiences of fun and joy. But uh, the tier three has a higher 
percentage of stuff. Um, and if you actually, if you're grinding, grinding for a spare ration sand cannon, it's better to do a tier two because there is l less loot um, for you to be modelled with. There is a modifier for this week, Void Singe, that's here all week. And then there is Grenadier, which is today. It may change, it might not. Keep your eye on it or um, it will sneak up on you and take your wallet. Then we've got Gambit, which is the reason why we're here. Gambit Normal Flavor and Gambit Deluxe. Gambit Normal, Gambit Deluxe. Both a little different. If you don't know the differences, I say get stuck in and find them out for yourself. Uh, matches complete, three of, and that's spread across both of these playlists. It's not three of these matches, get powerful gear at tier two, three of those matches, and then get even more powerful gear at tier two. Nay, it is three matches spread out between these two playlists for your powerful gear at tier two. That's how it works. There's some private matches there if you fancy playing with your nan. Um, there you go. Isn't that nice? Crucible A this week. Not forgetting, we have two types of playlists in the Crucible. We have two subcategories, rather. Rotary and Core. Rotary playlists are at the top. This week, it's Supremacy and Lockdown. Okay, then we've got Core, which consists of a Rumble, Control, Elimination, Survival and Survival Freelance, and Classic Mix. They consist of your Core matches. If you play four completed games of Core, that's like four games without quitting or turning off the console or PC and doing something else, then... That will get you some powerful gear at tier four, uh, tier one, sorry, tier four. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, pull my leg. And anyway, there is a uh, rotary matches, of course. Four of those will get you powerful gear at tier one as well. And there's private matches. If your nan was bored of Gambit and she wants some proper gaming experiences right there. What else have we got? There's plenty. I know there is. I know I'm missing something. We've got Escalation Protocol on Mars which if you brave your way through the seven waves of loveliness and defeat the boss at the end, your uh, chances of getting a specific piece of loot um, will increase the more you do it. And that this week is the SMG. The Iculus SMG is what will be awarded to you if you get lucky with those RNG drops for Escalation Protocol. If you want more of that flavor stuff, we can go over to the moon. And there is a very similar activity to Escalation Protocol at the Altars of Sorrow. Very similar. Apart from, you are guaranteed uh, a drop without any RNG messing up your day and um, causing you pain at the end of that. You just have to make sure that you defeat the boss at the end. Otherwise, it's uh, rinse and repeat back to uh, the previous wave and carrying it on over and over again. But it's not that hard. So I'm, I'm faithful that you can do it. You've got your confidence and self-esteem to back you up. Nice. And then there's more stuff, more activities. We've got Nightmare Hunts. There's a couple to choose from. They rotate each week. And uh, the weekly is complete any Nightmare Hunt activities or difficulty tiers grant progress. That will get you powerful gear at tier one. And then if you want some pinnacle loot, just complete the Nightmare Hunt on master difficulty. You might want to go in there with some friends, though, because it is slightly on the tough side. Although I know some of you strapping guardians can do it all on your own self. Uh, I've managed to do that once, and once was enough. Anyway, those are your Nightmare Hunts. There are some other activities, considering the Pit of Heresy dungeon. That will get you some pinnacle loot if you run through that, as well as the Garden of Salvation raid. Very, very good. Very nice. And, of course, giving you the pinnacle the precious pinnacle loot. You can head on over to the um, Lectern of Enchantment because if you defeat a whole bunch of the nightmares in the Altars of Sorrow, then you'll get some powerful gear one for your troubles, as well as Luna's Calling, the weekly from our favourite Eris Morn. Nice. What else is there to have a look at? Um, of course, all the new stuff that's been time ungated, rather, is going to be over here and here. And then um, there is at the tower... I usually visit here first. I would introduce you to the game if you're new and say, look at all these vendors. They'll give you things and go and do activities and complete them and you'll get stuff. But we've done things differently today and why not? I hope I haven't annoyed anyone. But then anyway, there we go. If you visit Saint 14, there is the Bright Future Quest. Um, this is new. I'm not going to spoil anything. So go and go and have a look at that at your own peril. Okay. On to the next part of the video. We will check out um, uh, the gunsmith. This is one of my favorite vendors because he smiths and I like smithing. And uh, we've got some really cool bounties, weekly bounties. Every vendor has 
bounties of some degree. The gunsmith has got a couple of weekly ones, but the reason why I bring you over to here to uh, get your eyeballs on all this stuff is because you can get upgrade modules from these two weeklies, and you can also get mod components and enhancement cores from completing these daily bounties, which refresh each day. These don't give you anything apart from Glimmer and XP. They're additional bounties which you can constantly go back and get. But if you do Crucible ones, if you head on over to Shax, and if you head on over to the Zavala at the uh, Vanguard, they will actually award you Bright Dust. So if you got anything um, in the um, Eververse store that you'd like to purchase for Bright Dust, then those are the bounties that you would do. But we come over here because these bounties are great, especially for beginners, because you need enhancement cores and mod components and whatnot to up, up, upgrade your gear. Mod components will buy you stuff from... Uh, here, look, we've got two. So two mods are always available each day for sale. There is a armor mod today. We have rocket launcher scavenger, and uh, there is a weapon mod, and we have minor spec uh, available today. If you're not after those or not interested in those, they will reset on the daily reset every 24 hours. Of course, you can exchange other materials as well uh, for all these important bits and pieces right here. So there you go. That is the gunsmith. I'm also forced against my will to show you the armor at the Leviathan vendor. So we're gonna go and visit him. So I'll be back in a jiffy. Derelict Rabbit Hutch. He has for us the helmet of the Eater of Worlds, the gloves for the prestige Leviathan, the chest piece of a normal flavor Leviathan, um, boots from the Prestige Leviathan, class item from Spyro Stars, and the Sins of the Past rocket launcher. We're going to shoot on over to Nessus and have a look at his brother from another mother and see what inventory he's got for us as well. Be back in a moment. Werner! His posture's slightly better than his, uh, his mate. Now we've got the helmet from... This is the same stuff, isn't it? Minus the boots. Really identical. It's quite uncommon that it would be this identical but anyway we've got the helmet eater of worlds we've got prestige leviathan gauntlets normal chess piece leviathan business there uh, the only thing that's different here is the eater of worlds boots and then there is spiral stars class item and since the past again a bit underwhelming but anyway there you go that's the inventory there we're going to wrap up the video now by having a look at the eververse store which is available from the director right there um we've got some new exotic ornaments adorn your favorite weapons right then Oh, the prod. I like this. This is a nice ship. Anyway, Cowbell, multiplayer emo. Oh, wow. Why is there three of us? Is it because we need more Cowbell? Oh, they've had enough of it now. Okay. Uh, Black Death, weapon ornament. This is the uh, weekly offerings in the exclusive section. Cowbell, Black Death ornament for the Crimson Exotic Hand Cannon. The Prod. I really like this. A Tex Mechanica ship. Is it the first of its kind? The first Tex Mechanica ship we've had, but anyway, I'm having that. Uh, Spare of the Moment, another fantastic bit of, bit of loot right there. Who wouldn't want a raging bullhead on possibly one of the chunkiest sparrows we've seen today and then there's the tex mechanica shell right there as well that is uh, it's a tex mechanica like theme going on here at least it was quite dominantly a theme anyway um what else do we have for a bright dust the concentrated matter gem uh, bosses have a chance to drop an upgrade module when defeated if uh, you're interested in that kind of thing we've got some boons we've got the welded brass shader the up in smoke transmat effect tip of the spear um, Sparrow there, as well as the playground ride. This this is awesome. I like this. I I didn't get it the last time it was available for bright uh, for for silver because I didn't have any silver. But anyway, there you go. This there's here's the seasonal stuff. This is all the emotes, the exotic ornaments and finishers, everything cosmetic that you can think of for the season, uh, which may become unavailable uh, after the season ends. But you've got until uh, the beginning of March, I do believe. Anyway, there's the archive for stuff that was available previous seasons. See, we say in the previous may become un unavailable because some of it does end up in the archive, but not all of it. So there might be something that you've got your heart set on and then you can't get it. And then the world is ruined. But then we go bright dust. We've got playground ride. We've got the Lampion shell. There's the chrysalopelilum, the pronunciation, um, viced foundry uh, ship there i'm tempted with that i'm gonna have to be farming a hell of a lot of bright dust this week poison courier shell shifting loyalties for your dust rot blues nice ornament there and the virulent mask um 
for uh, the, I think it's the same for each class, like whatever the mask is that was available for the for the, the Eververse armor. And then there is a lantern projection, as well as some more shaders, uh, a cabal shield breaker transmat effects and a palm tree projection for your ghost if you're feeling a bit swish. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is everything for the weekly reset, 4th of February up until the 11th of February. How's about that then? Have an absolutely fantastic week in Destiny. Pledge and donate your Fractaline and let's hit that community goal and get the emblem. I believe that's what's going on. I apologize if wrong, but I think that's what's going on anyway. Um, and I'll be off ski. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And remember, smoke me a kipper. We'll be back for breakfast.